The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as a, a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only son, who is close to the father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, here we are, and it is the third day of Christmas. As I said earlier, we have 12 days of Christmas, and this year we don't have any excuse not to celebrate each one of them, in, at least in some small way. I think we all are just very eager to say good riddance to 2020. But we still have a few days left of this year and we can use them to celebrate the incarnation, to ponder the mystery of the incarnation while we're waiting for the year to turn and for a more hope filled 2021. I would imagine that just about all of us had different kinds of Christmas celebrations this year. For our own family, the family Zoom time where we all were in three different places in the country were together on Zoom and opening presents together was the highlight for me. Then my mother's furnace decided to die a couple days before Christmas. And although we're in Southern California, it still gets a little chilly in the house and my mom gets cold very easily. So I have been spending a lot of time roaming her property, finding some of the wood that was cut down years ago when some of the citrus trees and avocado trees died and there's a little bit of cedar wood. So I've been lugging that all up and keeping the fire going. So that's a new, a new Christmas tradition here in Southern California. We've never used this fireplace as much as we have this week.
and some of that we may have started, you may have started some new ritual that you want to continue past, past the time when we, into the time when we are able to gather as we, as we love to in person. There may be something that you started this year that's meaningful that you will want to continue. Christ brought us a new way to relate to God. And this is spoken both in the Gospel of John and also in Galatians. From Galatians, we heard this morning, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. Did you catch that the first time around? So that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. That's from Paul's letter to the Galatians. We might receive adoption as children, is what he said. So... Some of you probably have firsthand experience with adoption, either through your, yourself or someone else in your family or a close friend. My first close friends to adopt a child were back when I was living in Atlanta, my friends Lindsay and Rob, who desperately wanted a child. And they, I sort of went with them on this two year roller coaster where they kept hearing that some a child was available and then something happened and they didn't get the child and that happened over and over. Can be really difficult for people who are wanting to adopt a child because there's so much uncertainty, so much unknown until hopefully something happens. And I remember when Lindsay got the call that there was a baby for her, they didn't have anything. Their house wasn't ready, um, but her heart was ready. Their, heart were, their hearts were ready. And I'll never forget going over to her house. Several of her friends were coming over with supplies that she needed because she didn't really have anything there. And um, Franklin was, I think, maybe two, our son, two or three, something like that. And I brought him over with one of his favorite little toys that he didn't need anymore. And I gave, we gave that to, to Lindsay and her little baby. And I'll never forget just looking at her face. Um, she was completely overwhelmed and she was completely full of joy holding that little baby. And then another friend of mine, um, Anne, who is a priest and who is single, went to Ethiopia to adopt a little girl. And then eventually she went back to adopt a little boy as well. And when she came home with her first child, Azalech, I, this was when I was living in Maine and she was a colleague of mine and friend of mine in Maine. And our whole family went over to visit the day after she arrived home with Ozilich. And again, the joy was just, just so present. And, you know, of course she was exhausted from the trip. That's a huge thing to go to Ethiopia. I think she had gotten sick over there and, you know, her brother had gone with her, so she wasn't by herself, but it, I just have some sense of what it takes um, in order to adopt a child. There are so many unknowns. Usually, sometimes you don't know the family medical history. If you have adopted a child from an orphanage, often their early life was difficult and they may have traumas that they have to, that will affect them for their whole life and they may be able to work through. Adoption is risky. And yet God 
chose to give us all the gift of adoption. None of us are orphans. All of us are God's children. But that was not without risk either. God takes the risk to adopt us all as children with no guarantee how we will turn out or how many times we will turn away from God or, or if we will spend our whole life turning away from God. There's no guarantee for God, yet God chooses to give us the gift of adoption as God's children, all of us. God has taken that risk. I found this short poem written by an adoptive parent that speaks to me of God's adopting us. She says, not flesh of my flesh nor bone of my bone, but still miraculously my own. Never forget for a single minute you didn't grow under my heart, but in it. Never forget for a single minute, you didn't grow under my heart, but in it. God holds us all in God's heart. And so even in the midst of this most difficult time on this unusual third day of Christmas, we can rejoice. Amen.